Perfect. So good morning, everyone. My name is Missy Lindsay, and I am the Senior Marketing Coordinator with the Southern U.S. Trade Association. Um, this webinar is going to be a little bit on the briefer side. We just want to talk to you about SUSTA and hopefully how we can help um, your company get some export experience um, in. And I also want to tell you that we have a surprise guest speaker. We have Victoria Wasike, who's going to talk to you a little bit later on about our export readiness training that we offer with SUSTA. Um, but before I jump into who SUSTA is and how we can hopefully help assist your companies, um, I just want to go over some housekeeping rules. Number one, we will be recording this webinar, so you can always go back and view anything that you might have missed out on. Um, please make sure to mute all of your uh, cameras or all of your computers and laptops and devices, uh, but we will have Q&A at the end, so please feel free to type in your questions during the presentation, and we will definitely get to them towards the end. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to get started with who SUSTA is and how we can help. Um, so SUSTA is actually funded by the USDA and the programs that we offer um, are also offered by our other state regional trade groups that fall into the other section of the United States. But what we're able to do at SUSTA is we're able to basically take the southeastern portion, which includes Texas, up to Maryland, down to Florida, and including Puerto Rico, to help companies kind of get a leg up in the international market. The money that we're received and allocated to help companies actually comes from the Farm Bill and through the USDA. Uh, if you do know a company that's not necessarily located in our region, which includes everything you see in the dark blue, uh, please feel free to still guide them our way and we can direct them to our other state regional trade groups that have the same type of funding and programs that we offer as well. Uh, we do have tons of support that we offer outside of the normal realms of what SUSTA does. Uh, we actually have foreign market consultants and represent, representatives in other country markets. We work with the foreign ag service. Uh, we have gain reports that are listed on our website. Um, to basically assist companies with finding out more information before they jump into certain international markets. Uh, we do have some requirements that companies must meet because the money we receive does come from the federal government. So, and it comes to the farm bill. So that's why we do have to make sure that companies meet certain requirements. The actual goal for this program is that the money trickles down to the farmer. That's why it's presented to us or given to us through the, ag, uh, the farm and ag bill. So the requirements are companies have to be headquartered within our region, which hopefully most of you are on this call. If not, again, we can guide you to, the, to our other state regional trade groups. You have to be considered a small business. Um, and that's gonna be by the typical SBA guidelines um, that they offer. Uh, but now we're also able to work with companies three times the normal small business uh, guideline standards. So you know, if you feel like you fall a little bit higher than that scope, you're still welcome with SUSTEP. And then we also want to make sure, you know, that you have sufficient sales. You know, if you're coming in for one program with uh, cost you around thirty-five thousand um, dollars annually, I always say that these companies are sorry, these products, not products. I'm sorry that these programs, tongue twister, these programs are meant for companies who are at the, the walking stage, right? Theoretically, if you have to crawl before you walk, you have to walk before you run, we want you when you're walking. So, you know, you're maybe in your local grocery store or farmer's market, you're in neighboring states, and maybe you're thinking, what can I do to kind of get my product to a new market? You know, I've kind of dug in deep with the US and, and what other markets are available outside of that for me? So that's the typical company that we want to work with, companies that are geared up, either ready to export or have some type of export experience. Um, we do have other eligibility requirements that are very important. Again, funding comes from the Farm Bill. So 50% of your ingredients have to be grown in the United States, and that's going to exclude packaging water and weight. Um, we're also going to need you to make sure you're representing a brand. That's very important. And somewhere visible on your packaging and labeling, if you plan on promoting your products outside of the United States, you're going to have to have either made in USA or products of USA, or even if you want to promote your state. If you want to say made in Louisiana, that's perfect. Uh, you just want to make sure that that is spelled out. 
Um, and acronyms may not be as easily recognizable in foreign markets. So, you know, make sure you spell out that state to put that on there. And it does have to be separate from your address. You know, we have some companies, you know, that have whiskey or they have bourbon and they may be from Tennessee or Kentucky. And they want to promote that this is USA whiskey or USA bourbon from these markets. So sometimes they may elect to put a half inch US flag on the front of their packaging and labeling may label with a made in USA underneath, that's fine as well. It's really up to your discretion. It just has to be visible on our end. Um, we work with all types of products from you know, value added products that you would see in the supermarket. Most items that you would see in a supermarket are products we work with. But we also work with horticulture companies. We work with tree farmers. Um, the newest addition that we've worked with a lot is hardwood. You know, and that can run from anything from actual lumber to we've had a company come in with like charcuterie boards that are made out of wood, or if you have a table made out of wood, um, as long as those other qualifications are met, we can still work with companies that have a brand with those 50% ag ingredients, okay? Um, if you do have a question wondering if your product would meet that qualification, please feel free to always call our office to find out. Uh, so SUSTA operates under two program areas. Uh, the first one is gonna be called Global Events. A way I like to kind of showcase this is to say that these are our SUSTA sponsored events. These are events that we host for companies to register, to, 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 particip uh, to participate in, what is going on with me today, to participate in uh, every year. Uh, I would say, honestly, we have anywhere between 40 to 60 events a year that take place both domestically and in international markets. Um, we do have inbound trade missions, which is always a great place for companies to start. Uh, an inbound mission is actually when we bring a delegation of international buyers to the United States to meet one-on-one -on -one with our companies. Uh, the best way to kind of describe it is a mini trade show meet speed dating. You have about 30 minutes to interact with the buyers that we've selected, key buyers from international markets, um, to promote your products that have been approved through the program area. They're super inexpensive in cost. They're only $25. Um, they're a wonderful way, at the very least, to get market research to see if your products would do well in these international markets. Uh, sales are still made at these inbound trade missions. And honestly, it's a great way to potentially meet a buyer from Canada or from China or from India or from Europe without even leaving the United States. Um, I will say during COVID, of course, uh, with travel being so limited, you know, we've pivoted to um, other forms of introducing our companies to international buyers. We still have some inbound missions taking place in 2022, but if you should see something on our website that says, you know, virtual inbound trade mission, it's the same concept of us having the one-on-one -on -one meeting with buyers and um, our companies, but we will have virtual trade missions and it's still $25. We will ship your product samples to the buyer so you and the buyer can discuss your product from a virtual standpoint. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at our site, but I love inbound trade missions. It's a great way to get acclimated to a new market um, without really having to put as much time or financial dedication towards meeting potential buyers. Uh, we also have outbound trade missions. It's going to be the same concept, a perfect example of those one-on-one um, -on -one meetings at that bottom photo, but it is a way for us to take our companies from the United States and bring them to an international market to meet one-on-one -on -one with buyers there. Um, of course, those are a little bit more costly than our inbound trade missions. They are $400 if you register early, $600 if you register later. But SESTA will um, pay for either your flight or your hotel, whichever you decide, um, include it in your registration. And then there are other ways that we can help uh, get 50% of those costs reimbursed um, through our cost share program that I'll discuss a little bit later. Um, but another beneficial thing about an outbound trade mission, in my opinion, is we always try to incorporate some type of retail visit or site tour with these outbound trade missions um, to help you see what competitors do are doing in international markets. Uh, the best example I could probably give is in Canada, you know, they drink milk out of a, um, a bag instead of a carton, right? So if I'm a supplier from the U.S., trying to sell milk in Canada in a carton or in a gallon the way we drink it in the U.S., it might, it might not sell so well in that market, right? 
Um, so by me going to an outbound trade mission, visiting a store, seeing what my competitors are doing in an international market, it makes me a little bit more savvy um, when I get those sales in. And I might have to change my packaging and labeling, you know, to meet, you know, the, the, the cultural standpoint or the cultural aspect of selling a product in a new market. Um, so I really think outbound missions are also another good stepping stone to try to find a new international market for you. Um, and then lastly, we're still talking about global events. Uh, SESTA basically will go to an international trade show organizer and purchase booth space in a USA in a US section of a pavilion and then create a SESTA sponsored pavilion. Uh, we'll then take the booths that we have in that pavilion and offer to our companies majority of the time at a reduced cost. Um, so just to throw out a random number, let's say a booth may cost $5,000 to go to a show in Canada and you know, you come with SESTA and it may only be $2,500 or $3,500. We also try to make it a turnkey process, right? So for your registration fee, we will include not only your booth, but we will include furnishing, uh, shipping of your product sample from a consolidated point to the trade show. Uh, we will also have an interpreter service there when another language other than English is spoken. Uh, a lot of times we will have a chef there as well to prepare the samples for all of our companies that are exhibiting. Um, we want to make this a really fun um, great experience for our companies. A lot of times, especially when it pertains to international shows, this may be your first show. Um, so we want you to be able to enjoy the process, meet buyers, and hopefully make some potential sales. Um, speaking of which, if it's your first time coming to a show, you're never participating in a SESA event by yourself. Uh, SESA actually works with the Department of Agriculture and each of our member states that I highlighted in the beginning. Um, and those ladies and gentlemen are great resources for us to help us facilitate um, and put on our events that we have for, glo for the global events section of SESTA. Uh, so whether you're participating in an inbound trade mission, an outbound trade mission, or you're exhibiting at an international trade show, you will have at least one or two people from the Department of Ag acting as a host on SESTA's behalf and a liaison for you between you and the trade show organizer or the buyer when participating in these events. Um, virtually, these Global events are just a way to get you out there in front of potential buyers and to promote your products. I feel like sometimes companies don't know where to start. And this is Susta's way of saying, start here, start with us. Um, so along with uh, the resource that we have with global events, Susta also offers tons of educational resources for our companies. Uh, we have a way for you to, you know, log in to your My Susta account and look at past webinars um, that we've hosted through the marketing program. We've had webinars that focus on logistics and shipping your product samples to an international market. What happens if your freight falls at the bottom of the ocean? Who's responsible? Um, we have someone talking about banking and financing. What do you do if, you know, you working with a buyer and the buyer says, okay, I'll pay you half of the money up front. When I get the product, I'll pay you the other half and then you get no money. Um, we have someone that talks about digital marketing, you know, how to advertise from a digital standpoint in the day of, you know, COVID or in 2022 in general. Um, the wonderful thing about all of the webinars that we have as well that are featured on our website, um, once you create your MySus account, of course, um, is that all the speakers, their information is listed at the end of each webinar. So it's someone that you can actually pick up the phone or send an email to and ask any additional questions you have directly. Um, and you can't beat that in my opinion. Majority of our webinars are free to participate in. We even have webinars that focus on country market overviews, um, highlighting how US exports are doing in those country markets and in those areas. Um, and I just think it's very beneficial, especially if you're trying to get started um, with exporting. We also have a helpline. Um, so you may have questions like, you know, I'm trying to get my product into this country market, but I, what are tariffs? You know, what certificates are needed in order for me to get to this market? Um, and that's where that uh, helpline comes into play. We have another Victoria, Victoria Mayhe, who works um, for SESTA and helps people with the helpline and can answer any questions you have. And again, on this call, we have Victoria Wasike, who is going to talk to you about another resource we have, which is export education. Um, and so it's, it's really a great um, 
tool, in my opinion, if I were a company to figure out how to get started, what do I do? Putting my ducks in a row, Susta can kind of help you from start to finish with that. Uh, so that's global events in a nutshell. So now I'm going to focus on cost share. You know, global events, again, are your Susta sponsored events. It's events that we host for companies to participate in. Cost share is a little different. Cost share is Susta saying, okay, we know sometimes it takes money to, you know, you have to spend money to make money. And a lot of times, you know, getting into an international market, it can be prohibited because you don't have the finances to do so. So the cost share program says, okay, here are some eligible expenses that we know are going to cost you to get in these international markets, and we will be able to reimburse you 50% for certain international marketing expenses. Um, there's a full list that I will follow up uh, with companies if you'd like with an email listing all of them, but I like to kind of highlight the heavy hitters um, and give more of an example versus um, going through a list of expenses. So let's say you participated with SUSTA. Um, they're a global event, which we hope a lot of you start to sign up for, and you do an inbound trade mission with Canada. I've been working on talking about Canada today, so let's stick with Canada. Um, so it's an inbound mission, an easy place to start, honestly, with exporting, because to get your products from the United States to Canada could probably take less than a week, especially if you have, you know, an organic, you know, product that has a, a, less chef, um, a lesser chef, shelf life than most products. Um, Canada is always a great place to start, Canada or Mexico or the Caribbean markets, honestly. Um, but let's say you're trying to get your products in Canada, you did an inbound trade mission with Sasa, you met some buyers, they love your product, but they are telling you in order to get into Canada, you have to convert your packaging and labeling to both dual French and English. Well, a lot of times new exporters don't realize that that's a cost that you have to cover. Um, so Susta will say, okay, if your company meet, it meets those qualifications, you have a brand, you have to change your product labels as a requirement, we can reimburse you 50% to do that. Um, and it'll be 50% for the translation of the labels, the platelets for the labels, the printing cost of those labels to get into that country market. Uh, let's take it a step further and say, you know, that maybe you know, you want to advertise in these markets. You want to show that you're here. So traditional forms of advertisement like radio spots, television ads, um, TV commercials, you know, even doing moving billboard ads are all reimbursable by 50%. Uh, even kind of new trendy things of ways of advertising like hiring an influencer or a content creator or a brand ambassador to post on social media forms I mean, platforms like Instagram or um, Facebook in Canada would be a reimbursable item. And to be honest, in 2021, that was very trendy because a lot of people could not get out and travel and, and go to certain markets. So those international kind of, you know, uh, new age, well, not new age, because it's not new anymore, but Instagram and Facebook feeds were a great place for companies to start. And honestly, these content creators are expensive <laughs> and these influencers are very expensive. Um, I found out how much one of our companies spent on influencers and it's it's a little costly. So, you know, if you can get 50% of that reimbursed back to you, that's a great, you know, a great resource to utilize SUSTA for. Um, you know, another great one is Google search. You know, if I'm in Canada and let's say I'm looking for, I don't know, let's use orange juice from the United States and I type in orange juice. If, I, if you wanted your product to be featured as one of the top five sources of orange juice coming from the US, that's a cost you do pay to Google. But because technically it's a marketing advertisement in Canada via Google, Susta would be able to reimburse 50% for that cost. You know, if you had additional products that maybe you wanted to introduce to those buyers that you're already working with and you wanted to send them some freight samples of your product, we could reimburse 50% for that as well. Um, I went too far. Uh, another great one are international trade shows. So the way I mentioned that SUSTA, you know, has a pavilion at these international trade shows through our global events program area. If you were to sign up with cost share, we could give you 50% reimbursement of that already reduced cost that you're exhibiting with us at this international trade show. Uh, we also understand that there are a ton of international trade shows out there. So we can't hit them all. So, uh, you know, the ones that you maybe wanted to go and exhibit it in your own, we could reimburse 50% for that cost as well. 
In addition to that, we also are able to reimburse 50% for flight, travel, hotel, and per diem for up to two people to travel to exhibit at an international trade show, whether you're exhibiting with SESTA or on your own. Um, you know, the premise, honestly, of SESTA is international. So even if there's something that's taking place domestically in the United States, I guarantee you that there's an international component to it. Um, there are some U.S. approved trade shows that the USDA deemed international. So we're able to reimburse 50% for select shows. Uh, there are about 30 to 35 shows on the list. Um, but some of the most popular ones I listed here, which are like Global Pet Expo, the Winter and Summer Fancy Food Shows, the Natural Products Expos, uh, the National Restaurant Association. We actually just got the CL America uh, show was just created for 2022, and that show also falls on the list as well. Um, and CL America is the same trade show organizer that puts on trade shows like CL China, uh, CL Canada, CL Paris. So I think people are really looking forward to that show. Uh, please keep in mind when it is a domestic trade show, though, we cannot reimburse for things like travel, hotel, and per diem. It's only going to be travel, hotel, and per diem when you're exhibiting at an international show. Um, another great expense um, that's really been popular, honestly, um, is advertising um, on platforms like Amazon in an international market. I've spoken with so many companies that are selling directly um, to their uh, suppliers or directly to their customers uh, via Amazon or from their website. And, you know, by advertising on Amazon, it's made them a little bit more, you know, um, accessible to the international markets. And then lastly, you know, even if you had a current website and you wanted to make it a little bit more user friendly and convert that website to a foreign URL, uh, because you have um, customers buying directly from your site, that's also something that SUSA can reimburse 50% for. So, you know, we have a lot more expenses and I'd be happy to talk about them in depth. But again, I just wanted to highlight these major ones and give some examples of what we mean when we're talking about um, these international um, marketing expenses. And we do have marketing plans available, well, not marketing plans available, we have um, the marketing plan available for you to fill out on our site when you're applying. So it's not a matter of you having to go out and hire someone to come up with a marketing plan for you, but it is important that you do have a marketing plan in place internally. And before you come with SESTA for cost share that you know specifically how you plan on marketing your products, right? Um, we do have you know, the eligible expenses featured and listed on our site. So you wouldn't be able to add something that's not eligible. However, we want to make sure that you have a true reason for utilizing the program. We're not going anywhere. We're here. We, they've been here. I've been here for 11 years. They've been here longer than I have. So, you know, the funding is available and the money is available for companies to come in and get that reimbursement. Um, speaking of money, um, I keep talking about a reimbursement. Um, there is a cap on how much you can re get reimbursed. It's going to be up to $300,000 a year. Um, we were allocated a different um, additional money through the ACP program, which operates honestly exactly the same as cost share. Um, but virtually for now, for this year, companies can actually get up to three. I mean, sorry, six hundred thousand dollars back in reimbursement. Um, but the way the app, the way the application process works for cost share is, it is an annual application that you have to fill out each year, and then it is a two hundred and fifty dollar non refundable application. And then you would fill out that your application online. Uh, we send a link to you. You can save it, fill out the information in the fields that apply to you. Um, and then there's a 6% admin fee on the amount that you're asking for in reimbursement. So let's say you came in and you are trying to get reimbursed to promote your products in Canada. And let's say you had to do those label changes and maybe you wanted to do a few advertisements. Just to throw out a round number, I know it'll probably cost more than this, but let's say it costs you $5,000 to get those things done. Um, that means you're coming in to request $2,500 from SESTA for your eligible expenses, and you would pay us a 6% on the amount that you're asking for in reimbursement prior to conducting the activity. So that means you would only pay us $150. You would fill out your application, conduct the activity, and then you would come in for your reimbursement. Um, we have a claims form that's also generated online, um, and it's just honestly a first come first serve basis the way we reimburse companies. 
So I would say the faster you get your information to us, the faster we can reimburse you. Um, two rules, I guess I would definitely highlight or stress with SUSTA. One, of course, is making sure that you have that marketing plan in place. I can't stress that enough. And I would also say, honestly, to err on the side of um, not caution, but I would restrain myself from like over uh, planning with my application. You know, sometimes I think companies hear $300,000 or $600,000 and they start adding things to their application that aren't really concrete and set in stone. So a lot of times when we have new companies coming in, my suggestion would be to say, you know, take a look at your year. What do you have coming up for the first quarter um, that you know for sure that you can come in and put on your application that's an eligible expense that SESA can reimburse you for? And then midway through that third quarter, I mean, that first quarter, I would look at the second quarter and say, okay, well, what do we have coming up? Because you can always um, add to your application and fill out an amendment. Um, and that way you can kind of really, you know, get everything done and line your ducks up in a row. And that way you're coming in at, at a safe space with SESTA and rather than overshooting um, an expense that you know you're not going to come in for. Um, and this, the, the most important thing outside of having that marketing plan in place, honestly, is you want to make sure you apply and you're approved prior to conducting any activity. SUSA cannot reimburse you retroactively. So it's going to be important that you do that application. You're approved for any eligible expense before you do anything. Um, and that way we can make sure we reimburse you. I know that this was um, a lot of information in a short amount of time. Uh, we do have a marketing team available uh, with SUSTA. Um, I'm the senior marketing coordinator. We have Danielle Coco, who's our marketing director, and Alistair Perez, um, who is our other marketing coordinator. We actually divide uh, our companies up by states. So certain states would work with me, other states would work with Alistair, but we are happy to dive in and talk a little bit more about what SESTA offers in depth with you. I just kind of wanted to uh, give you a little bit of information so you can understand how it works. And then another great thing with SESTA, when you are ready to start that application process with CostShare, we do have ladies in that department that can walk you through the application process and walk you through the claim steps to make sure that you're getting um, the best out of the program areas. So we're not just going to leave you hanging. Um, we definitely want to help you and assist. You know, the money honestly is meant for you. It's meant for U.S. companies um, and U.S. you know brand owners to try to get into new markets and exciting uh, ventures. So I'm going to pass it over to Victoria, who is going to talk about export readiness training um, that hopefully some of you will sign up for on the call. Thank you, uh, Missy. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I do see, see there's a few Q&A or questions. Are we going to just save those till the end? Is that right? Just want to address that before I get started. Yeah, I say let's save okay. them to the end. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. All right. Can everyone see my screen? And everyone can hear me? Okay, great. All right, so I'm Victoria Wasike, and my company provides the export readiness training for CESA. I wanted to come on and just talk to you a little bit about uh, what the training, training provides and how we can help you as you begin to um, export your, your products abroad. And so this is a brief presentation about how we can assist you. Um, once again, my company, we're called Golden Crest Global, and it's myself, and then I also have a, a consultant, um, our colleague that works with me. Her name is Trish Souza, and if you sign up for the program, um, I actually give the instruction, and then Trish does all the care and handling of the company. She'll make sure that you, will ha you have the notices, um, the Zoom invites, and everything else. So if you sign up for the training, you'll get to know myself and Trish very well. But I want to kind of give you an, um, an overview of the training. We have one coming up, and you can sign up for an export readiness training. Uh, you'll know all about it by the end of this. But the training includes three sessions, and so that is four modules, and they're all four hours each. So if you give me three mornings of your time, you will know almost everything you need to know about exporting from start to finish and have a roadmap for you to go ahead and get started if you're new to exporting. Three mornings is all it takes, four hours uh, for those mornings. We have one scheduled for SESA coming up for March 4th, March 18th, and April 1st. So those are the dates we have scheduled. And so I want you to go and check your calendar. I believe those are all uh, Fridays. 
Um, and so um, we will provide the training. It's usually from um, um, 8 to 12 Central and 9 to 1, um, um, actually, if you're in Eastern time. And then once you finish the training, we give you a wonderful a certificate. Um, usually our participants are so proud of that certificate because they learned so much and they went through the training and usually uh, we provide it via email and then we also send you a hard copy in the mail. <clears throat> so what do you cover? What are you going to learn through expert readiness training? You're going to learn a whole lot. So this is our curriculum. And we first start with the first module. That's that first morning, right? Just give me three mornings, you'll know everything. So the first morning, we tell you how to develop an export plan, uh, give you all the tools you need to classify your products for export. A lot of you have different products, so they'll have different numbers, HS codes, Schedule B codes. We actually teach you how to do it. So we'll show you how to go on the website, how to search for your product, how to write down your code and use it. And you're going to use it a lot, right, for a lot of your forms and to find a research about your markets. We provide so much information about researching for markets. As Missy said, you kind of want to have a roadmap uh, to know where your products would be the strongest, uh, which uh, markets you're targeting before you get started. And we provide a lot of tools. We show you exactly how to go on different websites, um, sponsored by the government, sponsored by the USDA, so that you can actually be prepared to know your top markets. And then also, of course, if there's a market or something coming up with SESTA, you can learn how to research that market ahead of time. And then we also provide you information about export assistance and service providers. Uh, what is provided by SESTA? What's provided by the USDA? What's provided and how you can go ahead and tap into quite a few resources. So this is the first module, that first morning, getting you ready to develop your export readiness skills. The second morning, if you give us that second morning, we give you the nuts and bolts. We teach you the tools of the trade. And so we tell you about free trade agreements, uh, the tariffs and how that's important, how you can research uh, which free trade agreement um, might be more relevant to your product and your markets. <clears throat> we tell you about foreign import requirements. Every single country has their own requirements, every single one. And so if you're looking at Indonesia, you're looking at Malaysia, you're looking at um, Argentina, it doesn't matter. We teach you the process to find out what you'll need to do to transform your product, to update your product, to get the requisite uh, forms and licenses and everything you need to get your product um, into the, the country. The next thing we talk about is pricing and um, the product for export my markets, because once again, you probably already know this, but you'll have different pricing from domestic to international. And then each market will likely have different pricing. So we give you some tools to go ahead and price your product appropriately for different markets. Um, the next thing we talk about is buy, finding your buyers and partners. We help you to understand how you can find your distributors, your approach. Do you want to do indirect selling, direct selling? Um, and so we kind of talk about how you can find buyers and partners on the ground. And then we talk about Inkle terms because you are going to get a pro forma invoice, which is what we use, of course, for exporting. <clears throat> and it's going to have terms of sale, those Inkle terms, and you have to know what they mean, right? What does it mean when you have FOB? What does it mean when you have um, all the other terms in there, X-Works? What does that mean? What is your responsibility? What's your liability? And so we have some companies that say, I've exported for so long, and we never really understood why we use this Inkle term. And that's scary because you should know, right? And so if you give me that second morning, you'll get all this information, which is very, very valuable. The last thing... <clears throat> Once you have your buyer and your partners, once you have that pro forma invoice and you've made that sale, now you have to get your product, of course, abroad, right? So that's the last module. And if you go ahead and sign up and you give me that third morning, you will know all about getting your products to your global customer, how to navigate shipping, logistics, how to look at the foreign export regulations, export licenses, information about that, export documentation. And then we have a thorough, thorough, thorough course um, or a section or topic for this course about export financing. Let's say the company says, I want a letter of credit. Let's say the company says, you know, I want um, <clears throat> to pay in advance or I don't want to pay in advance, uh, you know, foreign exchange rate. Um, and then we also will have information about different financing options, XM Bank. SBA, um, and just great information for you to understand how you can get your products abroad. 
So this training is comprehensive. Like I said, if you have three mornings, four hours each, you will definitely feel a lot more prepared to export your product abroad. Very quickly, this email is already gone out. Um, we're already taking registrations right now. And so if you want to register, you just go ahead and email Missy or Danielle um, or respond to whatever email that uh, you were contacted through SESTA and say, sign me up. And so we have that available. And then once you sign up, we'll send you this easy questionnaire so we can gauge kind of where you're at. And, and then we can go ahead and sometimes we'll try to tailor um, our training a little bit to the companies that we have involved. I want to make sure that I stress it is an interactive training. It's not boring at all, trust me. Uh, and so this is just a sample of the type of training that we provide. So it's interactive. Um, you're able to talk and you're able to ask questions um, the whole time. And what is very special is we also invite seasoned exporters to join us. So when we're talking about finding your markets, we have a tried and true investor or you know, um, exporter who has done this before and they tell you all the dirty stuff, like this happened to me, don't do this. You know, and they really save you a lot of head, um, headache. And then they also can answer all of your questions. We also have industry experts and they come on normally during the third session that last day. And so we usually have a freight forwarder that comes on. And usually if you have questions for that freight forwarder afterwards, you can go ahead and reach out to that freight forwarder and follow up with your questions. So you really understand how to reserve your space, you know, um, on, with, on a, on a uh, ship and how to reserve your space on a plane and however you're gonna ship your product abroad and how you work with customs brokers and all that great stuff. And so, and then um, we also have usually international banker that joins us. And they explained all about financing and letters of credit and all that great information. Um, one more thing, let's say you see those dates and you're like, man, I can make it to two sessions, but I can't make it to one. We do have video recording. So if you miss one session, then you can always make up that session, look at the video, um, and then you can still go ahead and keep complete the course on time with your fellow participants. So we try to be flexible. We know you guys are busy um, and life gets in the way. And so even if you say, well, I can't make all of those sessions, but I can make two, um, and then you know we'll go ahead and make sure you get that video, video recording so you can catch up. Um, with every session, we give you a wonderful handout. And this is honestly one of the most usable things because yes, we cover a lot, right? We cover a whole bunch in those four hours, those three mornings, um, but you need to also have something that you can remember all the stuff by. And so we provide you with this wonderful handout. This is just an example of, you know, and it has links in there. So all the links that I went to during the session, you can kind of go to the links and it, and it gives you instructions and give you the information that we went over in class. So that's very helpful. And then you have homework to do along the way. Um, that's just to make sure that you're kind of utilizing the information, you really understand it. So finally, once you're done, you get an export writing certificate. You're very proud of it. Like I said, so many people, they say that they display it. They're very happy because they completed the course. Um, now, we've had um, one uh, group that's just finished um, our export readiness training. And so we have some positive feedback I thought I'll share with you. Um, one uh, company said Golden Crest Global presented comprehensive training on export products to the global market. The training was top notch and professional and we were honored to be a part of it and better for the knowledge you gained. Another of our um, companies said after this training, I now feel equipped with the knowledge and language of exporting. Importantly, I feel like I'm more confident going into potential export markets. And that's really what we want. We wanna build your confidence. If you have an opportunity in South Africa, we don't want you to say, oh, I don't know what to do. We want you to say, I know exactly what to do. I know where to go. I have the tools to get my product into the country I desire. Now, who should participate? Now, if you are new to exporting, then you should definitely sign up because there are a lot of things you need to know. If you have new hires, this is very important because we've had a lot of shifts going on and, you know, in the, in the workplace. Um, sometimes I hear companies say, well, I hired someone, but they exported bicycles. Well, exporting bicycles is definitely different from exporting agricultural products with all the requirements and export, you know, licenses and all that kind of stuff and export um, permits. And so you definitely want to make sure that if you have a new hire on your company and you feel like they need to go ahead and just have some general knowledge about exporting, then sign them up. 
anyone in your company. If you want to train existing employees, let's say I, you know, you don't want to be a burdened in a nice way with exporting all by yourself. You want to go and have the marketing person uh, and get trained in export. You want to go and have a shipping person and get trained in exporting or just maybe your daughter of your family owned business just so you can spread the opportunity around uh, and the knowledge in your company. Sign up your company and so we can go ahead and train your existing employees too. And finally, sometimes we hear from companies, you know, we have members of various departments. So the marketing, you know, team might be very good for session one. And then, you know, the team that handles the shipments might be very good for session three. We can be flexible because we sign up your company, truthfully, right? And so if that's the case, if you, you want to go ahead and you, you want to be more flexible and you say, I would love for my company to sign up, but I want this person to attend this one and this person to attend this one and I'll attend the second one, whatever is useful. Our goal is that you are empowered to export and export um, in a way that is beneficial um, um, to your company. And finally, you, if you're on this call, then you are perfect. You should sign up. So um, um, finally, what are we trying to achieve with this export rate training is to have educated exporters. OK, and we want to make sure that you're able to take advantage of all that SUSA has to offer, but be prepared before. Right. And so this is a great opportunity. So we have upcoming classes. So make sure that you contact SESTA to register today. And that's my whole presentation. So I'll turn it back over to Missy um, and she can go ahead and continue. Well, thank you so much. That was very informative. And we had a few companies that were saying that they were really excited um, and wanted to sign up for the training. So I see you on the thread and I will definitely uh, reach out to you so we can get you that information to get you signed up to answer a few more of the questions that came in. One, yes, I know that this is a lot of information in a very short amount of time. Um, so one, yes, this is being recorded. Um, and two, we can schedule another time to talk, to talk a little bit more in depth about what SESTA has to offer. So don't fret, we are still here to help. And again, you can watch the recording online. Um, we had another question that came in and it said, for Amazon advertising, Google advertising overseas markets, how often can we request the reimbursement? And if we have been advertising for some time, can we request reimbursements for previous periods? Great question. So first and foremost, yes, we can reimburse 50% for those advertisements that are done um, via Amazon or Google on an international in an international market. So that is a reimbursable item. The way we reimburse is on a calendar year basis. So theoretically, let's say you had some advertisements that you were doing coming up in February. You could put that in your app in your application to get that 50% reimbursement. And let's say around you know May, you think that maybe you should do more advertisements on those platforms or renew it. Um, and so you have to pay additional funding for it, or additional fees for it. You would come in and fill out an amendment still for 2022 and add that to your application as well. So SUSTA works on a calendar year. So that's going to be January 1 to December 31st. So as long as you're putting these things into your application, it covers you for that year for reimbursement if you're, if you're approved for them. Um, you can apply the next year if you have more reimbursements um, or more eligible expenses to advertise on those platforms um, down the line for next year. Um, we can't reimburse companies retroactively, honestly, but if this was an advertisement that let's say you did at the beginning of this month, being you didn't know about SESTA, I would say to give our office a call and speak with the cost share director, Janine Wilkes, um, and tell her what the situation is. But Honestly, typically we can't we can't reimburse retroactively. So moving forward, you know, just be mindful to put everything in your application. But yes, uh, the advertising on Amazon and those types of platforms internationally are eligible reimbursable expenses. Um, another question came in. I know I keep talking about creating your My Sesta account. Where where can you find it? How can you get it? Um, after we finish, I will email the companies that have been on. Um, this webinar. And in that email, I'll have a how to get started uh, section and you're going to visit our website um, and follow those steps. And I will also send um, an outline which goes over all of the eligible expenses as well as a full list of those US approved trade shows. So I will guide you to the proper places to get started with us. Um, let me see if there were any more questions. 
Oh, what about 2021? So I'm guessing that you're asking about reimbursements for 2021. Um, so again, it, it depends. I would still say to contact Deneen Wilkes, who is our cost share director. So I will make sure to include her on the person that asks that question when I follow up with an email for you. So she can get in touch with you regarding um, any expenses that you may have had in 2021. Um, to see if it's not too late. But just keep in mind, typically it has to be that you fill it out in your application, but I'm not responsible for saying no. So I'm going to connect you to the person that can hopefully say yes. Um, let's see if we have any other questions. Great info on Amazon. What if I start, let's say with 500 per month and then I have to take it to $1,000 for the next month? How is that handled? So great question. Uh, again, you would fill out your amendment and you could increase that value. But again, we're all tangible people at SESTA. So if that should happen, if anything should change and you need to add to your application, honestly, we are less than a phone call away. We are a phone call away, a text message away, an email away. Pick up the phone and call Janina and ask. She loves questions and our job is to get this funding out the door to help you. So definitely call us if you have an increase on um, expenses that come up in an international market. So great question. Thanks. Uh, any other questions before we exit? Um, I see one that says, I've never exported before, but I'm interested in getting started. What programs or events would you suggest? Um, honestly, the first of all, welcome, let's get you exporting. Uh, but my first suggestion would be to do the export readiness training with Victoria, honestly. And then after that, I would start off with SESTA with the global events program area. Um, and the reason being is because those events have somebody there with you to assist while you're at these events, right? You have the ladies and gentlemen with the Department of Agriculture and inbound trade mission is probably the safest place to start um, because you're meeting international buyers without leaving the United States. It's super inexpensive, $25. Um, we do inbound missions, honestly, it, all over the US. So if it's not in your state, it may be in a neighboring state. We have a Caribbean and Central American inbound trade mission that takes place every year in Miami. Uh, we have uh, an inbound mission that takes place in conjunction with the Summer Fancy Food Show in New York. You know, we have inbound missions from Mexico, from Canada. Honestly, um, I, I, I love the inbound missions that we do. I think it's a great place to at least find out firsthand um, from seasoned buyers, you know, if your product would do well in that market. The thing I like about, because I've attended so many inbound missions, um, from the marketing standpoint for SUSTA, the thing I like about it is the buyers are honest. So if the product doesn't work in that market, they're gonna tell you, but they also remember you. So if they can't use your product and they all talk to each other, like they're all friends, they know each other. So if they can't use your product, they may recommend you to a colleague. Um, so I, I just think it's a great place to get started. And it's, it's a fun thing to do, honestly. How awesome would it be to say, wow, I'm in, Kroger's or an HEB or in Whole Foods in the United States. And I just got picked up in Europe. You know, I'm now being sold in Europe. Like how great would that be? It's, it, especially now when people are trying to find other resources to make um, income and to grow their brands. And this is just a, a wonderful way to start. So hopefully we can get a lot of you new people on the call signed up for SUSTA and export readiness training. Um, I think that's all we have for the Q&A. I would like to thank Victoria again because that part, that portion was great and it's always great to see you. Um, and it's great to meet all of the companies on the phone virtually. So give us a call and you'll get an email from me before the end of the week. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.